This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway around the world, Jared Morgan. Oh, hey there. How are you going? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, things for you, the viewers, to, to note. Watch Jared's lips as he talks. Yes, they are uh, in sync. Oh my gosh! The things we figure out. <laughs> I, I I tried. It's very experimental. <laughs> I I tried watching um back uh, just on YouTube because I'd done a premiere of the the episode at the beginning of the week, and and I was like, boy, his lips really are out of sync. That's kind of distracting. I got to figure that out. So it's been figured out. Yeah, solve the problem. Problemo solved. Um, what is what is just uh what what's the been week been like there for you, Jared? Oh, it's been interesting. So um, did the the tournament on Sunday, which I think we talked about uh, last time. Yes, yes, yes. And um, at around Wednesday, Star Race uh, had a MPU failure. So. Womp, womp, womp. Womp, womp. <laughs> I was expecting something to go wrong, um, and it turns out, yeah, the MPU died. Um, and the problem with the MPU, there's uh, the MPU is the thing that controls the lights, the sounds, and the game logic. It's the CPU, but they call it an MPU, main processor unit. So um, it wasn't booting at all, and it was booting with some lights lit, so some of the controlled lamps lit which apparently is like a telltale sign that the MPU is cooked. So Before you go forward, does this have anything to do with, you were talking a couple of weeks back about how you were having things kind of flash on and off and you were just like, well, I powered it down, I powered it back on and it was working again. Is is this tied into that? I think that could have been an early warning that something was up on the board. Um, Look, it could be the MPU. it, It could also be connectors. Um, they, it's like really, it, it's a very common cause of failure on games, but the MPU, it, like it, it was professionally restored and I don't for a second question that, um, it was anything to do with what John did to the boards. Cause he like went over that thing with a fine tooth comb. Like it was, and it was working for months, um, leading up to this point. Like I was playing the thing happily. But I think just, what, just not with the frequency that it might have been getting <clears throat> in a tournament setting. I, th- <laughs> I think it was more to do with the fact that it was on for like 12 hours a day. Cons- oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was like on, it like it had a really long burn-in time. And I have a feeling that that would have contributed to the failure because, you know, I was doing it sporadically. Like I would have had it on for one, two hours at a time playing it. And, you know, it's fine. It, it warmed up, it cooled down. It was fine, but you know this was on all day, um, essentially, and you know that's when things are going to go wrong with 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 old boards. So, for me, you know the the machine is sold, so it's still my responsibility to um, until it's delivered, um, make sure that it's it's going to work. So, I'm going to go. I don't really have a lot of options with this particular board version, System 80. It's not 80A or 80B. It's just System 80. So um, Rotten Dog make a drop-in replacement for the logic board or the MPU, and that's about 190 US. So I've just gone and ordered one of them, and um, I'll pop that in, and it'll fix the problem for for the buyer. Um, but you know, it's just it's extra expense. It'll yeah, it's not what you were not I'll... where you were hoping for nor expecting. <laughs> well, the frustrating yeah. thing too is that. It went down on what would have been the busiest day of the exhibition. So its potential to earn the most money was on the day that it decided to shit itself. So like, it was really frustrating from my perspective because like I was kind of hoping that Wednesday would be the you know the bulk of its earning day and yeah, it decided to to shit the bed then. so um, which, which of course could have then made up the cost for what you would now have to replace, but instead you only get twenty bucks to do that with. <laughs> uh, probably around that, yeah. Unless yeah. it took a bit of money leading up to Wednesday, I don't know. It may have actually done all right, but um, I was forlornly going around opening up the cash, uh, opening up the doors for all the other machines, and seeing a nice pile of dollar coins in there, and then just looking at mine and seeing it just like barren wasteland of coins <laughs> and going. 
It's very demoralizing. <laughs> not not what an operator and... wants to see. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. And like, you know, I did like I tried to get the thing working on Friday morning. I, I got up at like 4.30 a.m. to be into the exhibition at 6 a.m to try and get the like i figured oh, i might just be connected because i've seen some some odd boot issues before but when i got in i was told that oh the displays aren't turning on oh okay well the displays aren't turning on means oh it could just be a connector that needs a bit of a burnishing or a bit right, of contacts and right but when i got in it was like oh no the whole game is not turning on it's like well that's a bit different to the displays not turning on like displays are you know test the voltages see if the displays are actually operational or like they're getting the right voltage which they were all the the test points on the power supply were delivering correct voltage which is like the first thing you test and then you sort of you know go from there and go well it, it's the voltage is correct so it's got to be something logic driven but yeah it was sort of like i was a bit annoyed because i got up so early to, to thinking that it might be a recoverable error when really there was no chance. Like if, if the game was even booting, yeah, not much right, I can do about that. You, right. You, you would at least have a fighting chance at that point, but this is... That's right. whole another scenario. The other thing was that was slightly annoying, I only found out that my game was down because my sister went to the show wanting to play the game um, and sent me a, a Instagram pic with out-of-order sign on the game. And it's like, what, how long has this been down for? Like... And <laughs> why why wasn't I called? Like, I'm essentially the operator. I, I should be informed when my game goes down. And um, this is what happens on most locations where a table is routed, where the employees at the place or whatever just kind of go, huh. <laughs> you know what was really weird, though? Like, I was talking to the tech. Like, the tech, like, I, don't, I don't envy this poor guy. His name is Dave. He's an absolute legend. Like, he's very good at what he does. And he's actually the... Um, the, the, the tech that does all the work for Netherworld as well. Oh, okay. And he's there. He Literally, his days over the, the show period of being finished at 11, start at 6. And Good just, God. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> just been... My, my, my hat tips to him, I tell you what, because it was just like, <laughs> wow, mate. You, you deserve more. Whatever money you're getting, you need to get a lot more because that's a lot of work. So... You know, he was talking about the fact that uh, outside in the, the main arena, there's like the inside part where all the, the main bulk of machines are. And then outside, there's um, machines that are like in the main pub area. And Dave was seeing these machines just off and with a out-of-order sign on. And he was going, well, what's wrong with them? He's like, turn back on. They started working. And he goes to the – each book has like – behind the bar, there's like a little log book that they fill in with any faults so Dave can know where to start. And he went to one logbook and said, oh, yeah, it had fallen off its its foot, like its little rubber foot. It fell off its foot. Game over. <laughs> oh, like, my gosh. Out, out of water <laughs> sign on a machine because it fell off its foot. You can, have a, you can imagine the words that Dave had to the bar staff about that. Right? Right? Like, <laughs> it's terrible. I really, really feel for him. But, um... Yeah, he's, he's a hard-working dude. And uh, I think he was saying that I think I might have been the only person that came in before hours to try and fix the machine or like have a go at fixing the machine. Like, he goes, no one's ever here in the mornings. Like, maybe, maybe if they're attending a... If one of the operators are in a tournament, you know, they'll obviously, you know, if there's a problem with the machine, they'll try and fix it. But, um, yeah... If, no one's coming in early to try and help Dave spin these machines up and clean them. Like he's got 50 machines to clean each morning. Jeez um, Louise. Oh man. Like that, and, he's, and when you say clean, he's running a rag over the, the play fields of every one of them basically. Well, pretty much. We, he actually, uh, there's a bit of a tip here. If you've got a large collection of machines that are getting daily play, all you really need to do each morning is just clean the area where the flippers are. Um, so there's, there's key contact points that will usually affect a game, a game's play, um, style. And that is having, um, uh, dust, chrome dust on the flipper bats and in the return lanes and just in that area where the slingshots are. If you just give that area a good rub over, um, and just clean all the contact surfaces. So all the rubber surfaces there, that's actually enough to keep the game running pretty well. Yeah, because um, I mean, basically, dirt is the enemy. So exactly right. 
Yeah. Um, so to answer your question um, in the uh, the chat there, Jay William, it was uh, 50 games, 50 pinball machines on on site. Not all of those are operational anymore. There is about probably five or six that are down. But yeah, 50 pins, all donated from um, private collectors or Netherworld and a few other like sighted location uh, locations around the place. So it was like a massive, massive uh, gathering of all these pinball machines. Um, so yeah, like this, yeah, I really feel for this guy. He's done such a top job keeping machines in check. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, Star Race, no, no bueno. <laughs> it's uh, but it's okay because in in a way. I can. I've actually ordered some stuff from K's Arcade online, and uh, so the the Rotten Dog board was from K's Arcade, and I've also ordered a um, a thirty five dollar um, interconnect rebuild kit as well. So this is a thing that connects the the logic board to the driver board, and is like really one of the most important connectors in the game. And the reason why I order one of them is that Dave Dave operates a few system eighty Bs, and they use the same connector. And he showed me his brand new connector that he got. And I had a look at and compared to mine. And it's like, wow, okay, mine is really stuffed. <laughs> right, right. It, it's like all the contacts are like dull and and not shiny. And the the wires are super stiff. And like there's no flexibility in the wires. And like his one is like the contacts are like brilliantly shiny and chromed and like the you can move the whole harness freely around it's like okay i i i think it might be time just to invest the 35 bucks us in that and just you know replace the wires and and contact points they basically send you this bundle of wires that have all the um terminals on in a pin removal tool and you just systematically go through each one and pop the pins out and put the new ones in and that's all you do. It saves you. You do the labor, which saves you forty five dollars an hour in in technician cost. So, it's it's good money to save. Yeah, he, he, I saw a uh, I saw a post in a pinball uh, thread that I subscribed to on Facebook, and the person was asking. They said, um, "So, is it a good idea to buy an old machine?" that might need a lot of work, may not even be working, if you're not all that familiar with pinball machines. <laughs> and, <laughs> and everybody was just like, um, two things. One, it's a hobby. You're going to put a lot more money in than you'll ever get out. And two, if you have no clue, you might want to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, you might just want to go and buy a stern new in box and then start from there. Learn right. a few things when things break on that. That'd be a good idea, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lesson even I've learned, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, th 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 to certain people, you know, that, that like tinkering and like getting in there and, and like figuring out how things work, then, oh my God, a pinball machine is a wonderful, wonderful thing because it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> it's <laughs> when... got so many things you can tinker with. <laughs> and so, so many, many things, things that are going to go wrong. Um, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, you might want to... You might want to... Um, Invest in something a little more reliable than uh, mm. than going that route. Interesting though, like when I was going around doing the cleaning, like I got to the point where I went, no, I'm not going to win with Star Race. It's well and truly kaput. So I thought, well, look, it was about 7:40 in the morning at that point when I've been there since six ish, and um, I went, oh, you know what? Like I've got probably another 20 or 30 minutes that I could spare. Do you need a hand with anything? And he goes, oh, yeah, it'd be great if you could go around to all the machines and just give them a rub over, just give them a clean. It's like the thing that takes the most time. I'm taking my free play as well and putting it back onto regular play. I went, oh, yeah. Well, I did. I managed to get through about four machines. Four, like, that four, four and a half an hour? <laughs> yeah, or no, half an hour. Um, so, like, about 20 minutes, actually. I okay. got through. It was about five minutes a machine, which is which is about right. Um, and uh, <laughs> realized that I hadn't used a... Um, uh, a Belly Williams um, menu system for a very long time, and I went, "Wow, where is the adjustments for pricing?" Because it's like I'm used to like going um, on the Stern system; everything is under just the adjustments menu. And Belly have Belly Williams have a third menu, which is called pricing. That's where you find the free play setting. And it's like, "Oh, wow, yeah." I, I used to I used to have that, you know, be familiar with this menu all the time when I was working in the arcade, but I haven't touched a Belly Williams machine for years. So it was fun. It was funny to go, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember now. 
it, it's kind of like handling. I'm so used to handling uh, GoPros, the the current mm. ones, where everything is clearly, you know, delineated in the menu, and you know you can read everything and you can set the settings however you need to set them. But mm-hmm. then now and then somebody will be like, "Here, use this GoPro One," and you're like. It's all in code. What is this? I don't even know what the codes mean. You didn't give me anything to figure any of this out. <laughs> it's, wow. It's these weird codes that, that mean who knows what. So I, I can imagine it'd be the same thing with you know hopping onto a machine that's all dip switches. You'd be like, I don't know what the dip oh. switches do. <laughs> Just be, be thankful that most of the machines will have like a little chart in the back that tell you what the dips are. Otherwise, you need to go and scrounge with a manual. Hopefully, it's in the bottom of the machine or uh, online somewhere. And try and find out what each dip means. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Yeah, yeah. The rotten dog board that I'm putting in is is cool because it's an all in one. As far as like you don't need to put ROMs in it. It's all just like on one chip, and you use dip switches to select which game it's um, being used in. So I think it's got support for about thirty games that you got to leave system eighty. So you just go, all right, well I want Star Race. So I flip the switches and off it goes. It's Star Race. So you can essentially take this board and drop it into any System 80 um, and it will just work, which is why um, John Grist at uh, JWG Enterprise, the guy who does the servicing for me, he actually has a rotten dog in his test rig because it means that he can just like take any driver board from any game and drop it in and he'll know that he can test it on his rig. So I'm going to shift gears here a little bit. Uh, it's it's away from pinball, but it's kind of related to uh, one of our favorite topics, which is what to do with licensing. Um, ah, yes. So, and I've, I, the reason why this is in my head is I literally had somebody message me about it today, and I was just having a conversation about it um, two days ago. S- here in Southern California, we got the old Disneyland, and oh, they... Yes. At the beginning of the summer, they opened up their new Star Wars land. I think it's called Galaxy's oh, yeah. Edge or something like that. Um, it's about to open up at the Disney World location in Florida also. So they've... Right. Two locations they've done this. Well, there's been a flurry of articles that have popped up online about how it's failing. And it's doing terrible. And then oh. they're, they're really scrambling to figure out why. And it's one of those things where it's like, wow, people just don't use logic at all <laughs> you know when 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 applied to what's what's going on so two factors kind of played in first they raised their prices to 150 bucks per ticket which is wow that's a lot it's absurd it's exceedingly what expensive. did it go from and what was it was at a, well, i think last year is about 110 oh okay uh per ticket which is also pretty absurd but they start last year they started playing with what they called flex pricing. So basically, if demand went up, so the ticket prices. Um, and then they'd cap out oh, okay. a certain certain amount. Because the problem is, is so many people in Southern California have season passes that it'll make the park crowded for all the people that are just, you know, tourists coming to the area. Visitors. Visitors. Like, say, if I went along there and just went along to the park going, oh, I want to go to Disneyland, everyone, basically half of California is there. At right. any given day. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Which will ruin your fun. Well, it won't be yeah. so much fun. So yeah. so they've been trying to play with pricing just basically because they figure, well, demand is so high rather than turn away people uh, and say, no park is full. They'll just price it so that people will be like, well, I'm not paying that price and they won't go. So that right. was that's kind of step one of what they kind of did a bonehead maneuver of. Um, step four. Two that they did a boneheaded maneuver of. They of there's supposed to be two rides in this land, and they only have one of them ready to go. The other one's not oh. opening up until like December. So, you have a combination of people going, well, a I don't want to be there because of the crowds. B mm. it's going to cost this much, and I'm only going to get half the experience. Well, why don't I just wait? Well, yeah. So what has been found to be happening is, is there's significantly fewer crowds than they expected. What cracks me up is <laughs> the ride time, like the, the the line to get on the one main ride, is still 45 minutes long. Yeah, of course. People are, wouldn't, people are complaining because it's not two hours long. So therefore, it's obviously a failure. And I'm like, shoot, 45 minutes is still a long time to wait for a that, ride. But That's about the queue time for most rides in Australian theme parks. If we had to wait for two hours for a ride, there's no way I'd do it. I'd just bypass the ride. 
Right, you just you wait until later. Yeah, or yeah, like wait until people are having a lunch, then go and ride the rides. Right, you know, right. There, there are so many different algorithms out there that you can use to like navigate around Disneyland. You know where peak times are and all that sort of stuff. I've seen them. Like you know, you can plan out your day using this thing. <laughs> yeah, they like, they have apps cues. and stuff that yeah that will guide you to, to doing better. So where this comes into the licensing <laughs> aspect, and something also to consider. So there is a significant backlash against Star Wars right now, uh, mm, and it's okay. basically it's it's basically from all the butthurt nerds that didn't like Last Jedi and then boycotted the Solo movie because they felt that it was also somehow damaging their childhood, and Disney's the source of all the evils because they now own the Star Wars property. Okay, sure. <laughs> and I and I say this like legitimately because my friend hated Last Jedi and felt that it ruined the whole franchise and so he's basically boycotting seeing anything and doesn't have any interest in it. Okay. Yeah, you know, yay him. Um, <laughs> that being said, the park every day is selling out of their $150 to $200 lightsabers and their $100 builder droids. So clearly... Selling out? Yes. Okay. Not having enough of them in stock by the end of the day. <laughs> so... Clearly, money is still being spent in here. It's just a matter of they, they, they botched the crowd control aspect of it. Oh, they also blacked out all the season pass holders from being able to go. Oh, what? Yes. So, so they blacked out all the season pass holders in an effort to make sure that... They gave them like a two-week or three-week window to be able to show up and see it, and then blacked them out for the rest of the summer. Oh, what? <laughs> That's not cool. Well, yeah, pay... well, no, well, okay, so, no, so here's the thing. You gotta understand what the season passes are. There's like three grades of them. The first uh -huh. one is like, you know, I mean, again, absurd pricing. It's like 650 bucks, but there are blackout <laughs> dates. If you wanted the oh, unlimited right. one, it's like $1,200 or something like that. I mean, it's... Wow, okay. So the blackout dates are peak periods, essentially. So yes. use your pass in winter, essentially. Correct. Something of that nature. Um, yeah, right. So, but here's where... So you've got all these people that are, I think, purposely making a story bigger than it is just to prove how much they hate what's being done in Star Wars. But you've also mm. got the fact that Disney just bought Fox, has put out four or five movies so far this year that have crossed a billion dollars. It's the first time that's ever happened by one studio. Uh, right. They're about to drop their streaming uh, service on everybody. So basically, everybody is sick and tired and is of hearing how much success they're having and is looking for anything to knock them down a peg. And I think they're using yeah. this to really knock them down a peg. But will it really knock them down a peg? It's an attraction to the theme park. Right. Like... So what both of the people that contacted me were asking about, trying to get my opinion, was apparently if things don't turn around by February, which means the other rider will be open, they're going to shutter the whole land and retheme it to Aladdin. What? <laughs> you had the exact same response that I did. Because, yes, this is what you do with after you spent a billion dollars building this giant new land in two different parts of a property that is multi generational in fans. Yeah, let's just ditch it so that we can have Will Smith's genie bouncing around because you can't use Robin Williams's anymore. <laughs> no. What? Yeah, that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't really have anything to say about that. And, uh, and and this is where I bring it around to pinball again, is people still don't understand why we haven't heard anything from Zen regarding Volume 5 and all we've heard about is Star Wars. It's licensing. It's marketing. It's You don't just toss things around willy-nilly. Um, you have a game plan and you stick to it. And if at a certain point the game plan is failing, fine, but you give it time to fail. <laughs> mm. I've seen on the forum, I've read some of these threads, and some people are saying, look, you know, I just want something to look forward to. Well, like, they don't care about your feelings. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, the, uh, sure, look, I, I understand that everyone likes to know what's going on but they could not give two flying Fs about your feelings. Right. They have a bit, they're right. a business. They're trying to make money. They will do things the way they want. And let's just leave it at that, shall we? Like, I don't really see any reason to keep debating this. 
Yeah. Yeah, right. it's, it's it's ridiculous. And it's that whole thing of it's just like just let's apply a little bit of logic, just a, a smidgen, please. Um, you know, to this whole thing because what what really would make more sense? You know, I don't know. Um, I don't know either. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have. <laughs> I just don't know. Yeah. So as we're in this lull though between releases. And, and it's been it's been a, a rather large lull. It has because <laughs> I mean this was... is the thing. This is what people are getting antsy about because you know they they used to like you know the uh, kind of semi predictable um, six to eight to ten week cycle that Zen operate on, and it's been like radio silence really um, from Zen for a long time now. And they're going. This is where people start to you know overthink things a lot well and it's no fun to complain about farsight not having had anything to produce in over a year uh, yeah you, ca you, you can't really dig at someone that has zero even zero release plans like there's nothing to speculate on right <laughs> so i mean zen did announce that they're releasing the uh fx2 vr for the new oculus quest so that's something yeah, that's something yeah and then, of so course, that... I was reading, well, how come it's not FX3? Because <sighs> it never was FX3. It's always FX2. Right, That's but then they're they... going, well, how come they're, not do... how come they're not doing FX3? And it's like, and again, uh, VR, it's very, very niche. And yeah, very it's niche. probably their second attempt then of going, well, okay, let's dip our toes in the water again. Let's see if we get even more downloads, if this Oculus Quest is more popular um, if we see a large enough user base, because the user base will, is certainly hungry for content, but there's got to be oh, yeah. enough of them to make sense to put the money forth into the development of of these things. And it's not these aren't straight ports; they have to build the the VR the environment. And everything. Yeah, yeah. You know how to contain yeah, they're, they're, some of these into an actual cabinet. You know, they're a very very hungry audience for VR, but the audience is two percent, so. Or let's insert, and that's an arbitrary number, but that gives you an idea of the type of audience level. Of and, this the thing. I mean, and, and the audience is even smaller than what the, the virtual cabinet audience is. Yeah, that's right. So. so, you know. With that in mind, and I did this on Friday, so I apologize to those of you watching us live uh, on Twitch, but we're going to do it again because Jared didn't get to see any of these. Jared... I downloaded a whole bunch of craptacular mobile pinball games. Ah, excellent. <laughs> and so I'm going to show them to you and uh, see if you have the exact same response that I had and our viewers did who were threatening to log off until I started playing real pinball. <laughs> <laughs> real pinball. <laughs> All um, right, so a caveat emptor, this will be, like, my responses will be slightly delayed because I'm watching the broadcast through Twitch. I won't be able to see these um, things that you're playing until it displays on Twitch. So, right, it's, it's, it's only going to be, I don't know, five-second delay at most, I imagine. Oh, well, that's, we'll find out, won't we? So we, I'm we, will bring find this... we will find out. So let me just uh, get over, say bye-bye, Jared, because it's going to go to this other screen. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting weird messages here. And let's go maybe later and go here. And, oh no, what's going on? Why am I not getting my proper... Hold on one second, you know, I'm, having, I'm having technical difficulties as it's going... You're not paying the man, that's the reason. Go I know pay it's the not man. paying man, but, but that wasn't what happened yesterday. And I even tested this out earlier and it was just perfectly dreamy and fine. Let's try here. Swimmingly nice. Well, I'm hearing it in one spot, but why am I not hearing it in the other spot? Hold on. Let's go back to you. Sometimes I gotta, you gotta get out of it and then pop back in, and nope, it's still oh, having yes. problems. Okay, yes. hold on a second. This is lovely, isn't it? Let's. I, that music was just fantastic. Um, <laughs> gonna do a little live, uh, live triage here, folks. Sorry about that, but um, I'm telling you. It was working just fine. And now it's not. Okay, that's that. Yeah. It's got the phone mirroring, and let's go ahead and try doing this. And oh, there is the problem. 
I see what the problem is. It my box shrunk. Oh, it's nothing oh. worse than having a shrunk box. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I understand. Oh. If my bo- see, it, it's capturing the wrong damn thing. That's what's going ah. on. It's, it's capturing the window. It, it's <laughs> capturing like a free trial window. Right, it's capturing the free trial window, and uh, yeah, we're gonna remove that, and then we're going to uh, we're going to add this back in, and let's see. So that's a capture window. Oh no! Don't go away! Don't go away! Oh, my phone's fighting me at the same time. Going, you don't want to mirror this anymore, do you? Um, Let's just no, get s- no mirroring for you. You come back. No mirror. mirroring for me. I know. See, and I and again, folks, I, I apologize. I actually did have this um, all set and ready to go. And just here we go. Why do I keep on getting the exact same message? This is terrible. This is terrible. It's terrible. <sighs> I'm so disappointed. I'm so Much disappointed because it was literally working right before I went on. I tested it and everything. This, it's it's live broadcast, man. Everything's going to fail when you do a live demo. It's just the law of IT. It, it really is. is. And the weird thing is, is. is that I'm not even able to to tell it to, to find out. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to cut to you. I'm going to go into this other mode that... I, should allow me to work on it while they see you instead of me working on things <laughs> okay it's like it's like uh, lower the veil lower the veil uh, yes something yeah. of that nature uh, i've actually well while you're doing that i will go and i i don't know if you'll be able to see it super clearly but i'm going to go and unblur my background and i'll show you my very nice um pinball masters uh, things there yeah, you probably uh, won't be able to see them too clearly but i've got two posters one of them is the classic targets match play which is at the top i don't think i'll be able to really see too much i'm gonna go blair witch on you guys Woo! and the top one's the classic uh targets match play and the bottom one is uh, the pinball masters they're really nice and they look very nice done uh, in laminated um, form too they, they come up really you know when you laminate a poster and it just brings up all the yes all the highlights in it. The luster. Just like, it's like clear coating. It's just coating. like putting a clear, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> clear coating a poster. <clears throat> That's exactly right. So yeah, it looks really slick. Um, yeah, but you can see those up on the um, uh, bnepack.org website if you want to uh, take a look. Um, they're very, very slick. I'm, on, I'm getting there. Mm. I'm getting there. Uh... I went to a party last night. It was a Someone else was turning um, four decades old, like me, um, and uh, we went to their party last night, and it turned out to be a really, really awesome night. Actually, uh, they had a smoke machine and lasers and like you know, disco lights and stuff. And I was experimenting with a few modes on my camera um, that you know are like night modes and like light painting and stuff like that, and just okay. like focusing on one of the like, the laser lights and seeing what it did when I had like light painting mode on, very strange results, I, I will say. Very interesting, but very strange results with the with the, the light painting mode on the on the phone. Okay, yeah. well, beware, Jared. I think we might, we, oh, there we go. I think we see things now. Yes, I can see it. Okay, well, we're Ooh, not playing, William, we're, we're not playing Williams Pinball though. That's the point. We're, no. we're going over into my, my folder that says pinball? Uh, pinball. Pinball. So let's let's get your reaction to this one, Jared. Hey, what's Sakurai Pinball doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's the old app, and uh, the old app is very questionable. <laughs> pinball flipper. That's a bad side to start with. <laughs> Why did nothing happen? Wow, we just went to a black screen. Okay, let's try that again. Well, that one's terrible. Thanks. There we go. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so Jared, this is your typical 2D. Oh, right. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> okay, look at the angle of the flippers. That's a good, like, you know, 80 some degrees, right? Now, let's see if oh, there's bounce on them. I'm going to do a dead pass if it gives me the ball. This is where you know things are bad. If it will 
Gotta get it. Here we go. Oh! No bounce whatsoever. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Oh, so much bounce. <laughs> we Aren't we having fun? Okay, so that's that one, right? So, oh, turn it off. people turn it off. avoid pinball flipper. Now look at, let's look at this one. Pinball baskets. Oh, no. The See, pin, all these are going to... Pin baskets. Oh, okay. This one was a rather amusing, too. So it has a whole bunch of fake basketball teams. So you've got oh. these steppers that should be the Lakers and the... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what the monsoon rhinos are, but the Tundra Volunteers, that should be the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. I know that much. The Tundra Vonters, not Volunteers. It's oh, Vonters. Tundra Vonters. Okay, what the heck is a Vonter? So anyway, I had to go <laughs> I don't with... I not I had to go with the steppers. So... This one is great because it's hard to flip. <laughs> okay, so the game is about flipping and it's hard. And oh, wow. it's really like floaty and slow. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you flip it, it goes. Oh. Wow. And I, I see that there's like a slot machine effect, and I think that's. You know, who are they passing it to? Uh, don't know. And, like, sometimes the flipper has power and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> oh, jeez. That, like, all I can see is these apes on the screen. Like, <laughs> get, do, like doing... Oh, he takes a shot. Yay! <laughs> oh. How do you make him do that? Like, how do you make him do a shot? What is the? I don't do anything. I, it has something to do with that slot machine at the bottom, I believe. Oh, okay. So when you get steppers, he takes a. Sh oh, okay. Why he took two shots in a row? Don't know. Well, he and he's taking another shot. He a, oh, he dunked. I I don't understand what the heck is going on. I'm not doing anything. I'm literally like got my fingers off the flippers. I like the fact that the uh, the. What look like stand-up targets actually act like slingshots as well. That's a very nice feature, <laughs> you know. And um, uh, well, look, hey. Oh, well, you see the bounce on that? Sort of... You see that? It went straight to the flipper drawer. Didn't even bounce whatsoever. Oh yeah, yeah. I just saw it then. That's oh, it's, it's inspirational. <laughs> okay. Um, so so, what do you think of that one, Jared? Do you, do you, did you like that one? Well, was that a good one? So, when when I was doing pinball on Google Play, because I did a similar sort of thing. Um, on Google Play, I always did the pros and cons. So I said, number one, is it pinball? That's the first yes. question you need to ask yourself of these games. And that last one, yeah. And the first one, yeah, pinball. It is pinball. The second one, with the basketball, it's a pinball mechanic. Um, <laughs> but it's you sort can of technically pseudo call pinball. it, yeah, pseudo pinball. Okay, we got more though. You're gonna, you're, you're. We're just getting started, Jared. <laughs> See, look at everybody's, everybody in the comments is going, no, not more. <laughs> yes, no. more. Sorry. Because, you yeah. know, our, our podcast viewers didn't see the Twitch stream. So that's the, that's fine. Okay. Our, pod, our podcast viewers still won't see the Twitch stream because it's a podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. This one, um, <laughs> this one, what to note is how boring it is. <laughs> okay. Because oh. of... How much time is spent in the pop bumpers that are laid out like nobody would ever lay out normal pop bumpers? Oh, right. Oh, look, oh. it actually went out pretty quick. Yeah. I love the luster on the ball. It's incredible. <laughs> Looks like you're playing with the uh, ceramic ball, right? Yeah. Jeez, you're not kidding. <laughs> It's worse than Adam's family. And even Adam's family drank. And, and here we go again for more. Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, and now, now look at this upper flipper, too. What exactly is it aiming for? That you couldn't uh, aim for with the bottom flipper? I have no idea what it's supposed to be there for. Oh, it's because it, it exits that? in a really... See that bounce? Way. No bounce. Again, I love this. Oh, There's no... Oh, yeah. Nothing on the rubber. <laughs> no, no. It's just basically concrete. Yes. Okay, so enough of that. Oh, one. oh well, yeah, that's well. Look, is it pinball? Yes. Uh 
Is it well done? Is it something you want to play more than 30 seconds? No. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Okay. More. Um, Let's go to this one. Oh, this one is this one is really terrible. You may have even played it at one time. Oh yes, I've played this. Yeah. Which this one I, doesn't even do second screen for me. I have to look up on the uh, on the main screen in order to see what the heck is going on. Um, but again, what is with the flippers and the massive? Oh yeah. And then well, look no, at the. It's, it's basically, they've monitored. They they modeled this game on on uh, Gottlieb um, Super Catch for this. Right. But look at how there's. Now, okay, so there was a slight bounce at least there. Yeah, um, I can see the bounce. But, but you can at least drop like you know, shuttle pass. But who puts right angles in a in an inlane? There's like no curve whatsoever. Ugh. <laughs> and then it goes. Oh, well, that's such a, a lovely clean drop into that hole, isn't it? it just right. Goes, it hits the hole and then just disappears. Yeah. Okay. So enough of that one. I'm not going to show that one anymore. Yeah. This is the yeah, one that. This is the one that I. I I'm really curious to see what you're going to think about, Jared, because it is pure commercial. So do you know the Pepperidge Farm goldfish? Yeah, yeah. I've seen those in Costco. I've even tasted them. They're disgusting. Well, congratulations. They have a pinball machine. No sponsorship sponsorship deals from them for us. Now, what's frightening is this is probably the best of the batch. (laughs) (laughs) So what it... Is very reminiscent of is in Zachary Pinball, you have the Lamp Hunter mode. Oh, yes. That's what this reminds oh, me of. Yeah, right. You know, you should also try out if it's on iOS Trolley Pinball. Trolley. It's like Trolley Gummy Lollies Pinball. Oh, okay. Um, it's, I, I presume it's on iOS. It's certainly on Android. And it's not terrible either, but it's another heavily commercial game. I love the fact they got pigs on flippers. It's like literally like someone's designed this. It's all cardboard cutout. Yes. So it's like someone's designed the, the, the playfield. Oh, now it goes to the other playfield. Yep, this is very much like Trolley Pinball. In fact, I would suggest it's probably using the same engine uh, and the same sort of mechanics. Um, so would you call yeah. this pinball, Jared? I, I've seen pinball games in the past that look like this. It's pinball enough that it's, you've got flippers and it's got objects you need to hit. And yeah, it's, it's pinball to me. I would pass those pinballs. Yeah! Oh, it look like they're actually behaving correctly. He finished the game. Hooray! I finished the level. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, oh that's my gosh. very similar. Stop, really stop, stop already. Um, yeah, so. Those are the terrible pinball games. Now, here's what we didn't do in the uh, <laughs> in the uh, Twitch stream. Let's show you some good alternatives. Some good alternatives. Some good alternatives. And we're going to start with... Atomic Pinball. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So let's try this. Señoras y caballeros! Let's get ready to rumble! So, the physics feel good. There's actual bounce off your flipper. There's a proper layout. It's oh, actually Yeah, I mean, this is fine. This is uh, fine. Uh, this is good. Um, and it's, it's just the only thing I'd say about this is that the weight of the ball feels unusual. Um, in the fact that it speeds up a lot, it's down to yeah. But apart from that, you can have a lot of fun with it. I know there are, there are members of Pinball Arcade fans that have had a lot of fun with this. Now, here's um, the only other thing, too. Look at the size of the flipper compared to the ball. That's where they got it wrong. The ball's too small. Yeah, it is a little bit too small, isn't it? Yeah. It's like the, the ball looks like rattled around in the return lane when it came back down. Yeah. But that's the only problem. And, we, you know, we saw ball scale issues in... Um, uh, Pinball Arcade, all the yes. time, as well. Yes. So, yeah. Okay, Jared, you hear it. Can you guess what this is? I can't hear any of the audio coming through. Oh, the audio's not coming through for you. No. Well, that's a bummer. Well, I'm just going to have to spoil it for you. Pin out! Oh, yes. 
I never did pay oh, for actually, premium on this. I'm going to. I'm, I'm just turned on. Yes, I've turned on the, uh, the, the audio. So I'm getting double audio now. That's okay. So this one is, again, a question of is it pinball? Because you're using the me pinball mechanics. But you're also very much in a leveling up kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I, I well, I'm sure the class this is pinball. But I've got a very big soft spot for this. I think it's uh, <clears throat> it uses the pinball mechanic, and there are elements in there of you know pinball. You've got the, the pop bumpers, and you've got uh, things like um, um, lanes and stuff like that, and things that push the ball around. I, I call this pinball. this is pinball to me. And the physics are pretty good. I mean. Even aiming off the flippers is, it feels good, it feels right. You can actually do it, number yes. one. You can actually, yes. And that's that's the thing with this game, like it actually, you can't, you're not just like shooting blindly. The thing that's interesting about this is the this game, because I've played it extensively, it's all about backhanding everything. Yeah. So you can pretty much backhand all the shots in this game, and that's how you, um, you get like through the extra time mode in this game. It's a fun game, and it's got a really good soundtrack to it too, if you like um, a sort of electronic soundtrack. Right. There we go, there's a level. Yep, that's right. Then you go to the next thing. Yeah, and then yeah, it goes, yeah. and it goes, and I don't know, how long does it go for, Jude? Uh, it's got six levels. Six? Um, and it's, um, I'd probably say... It's got six levels, and then you've got the the thing where you're going to basically unlimited time at the end. So the the whole idea with the game is you build up your score um, as you go through the game. You pick up as many bonus points or bonus seconds as you can, because then when you get to the end of the six levels, you then play through all the levels again, but your time counts down, and you're trying to beat the clock to get to the end of the six levels again. So it's a cool mechanic. Um, and it, it's it's a very really fun casual pinball game to play for that reason. And all <laughs> of these, as I played them, these are these are all free to play. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you can pay for upgrades. Um, like with so with pin out, um, if I lose the ball, I can't save. I'm basically starting at the very beginning. Starting at the beginning, yeah, every single time. Um, if you pay yeah. for it, though, then that's not the case. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, and I've paid for that game happily. Like it was a good purchase. Yeah, um, mm. and and the same thing with I don't know what the deal with the uh, Rob the Robot and the I forget what the Mexican wrestling one is called. Uh, Luce Libre. Luce Libre. Uh, what's the deal? Do you know what the deal is with those? If you actually pay, what? Uh, uh, the difference well, is? I'd imagine you probably get like you get full unlimited access to it without ads. I think it had ads in it. If you. Okay. Um, if you um, don't um, pay for it, yeah, but yeah, it's like or limited ball time or something like that. Okay, so yeah, and, and all of these are it. under five bucks, or yeah, they're well under five bucks. I think they're only two bucks for the most part. Um, mm. If you were interested in other, while we're in this lull and you're you're wanting pinball, you know, there's things that you can at least play on your phone. Um, That's right, and they, look, they're fun games. I'd re I wholeheartedly recommend Pin Out. Um, and uh, I noticed that you uh, deliberately didn't cover Snowball. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. it, look, it's not. It's. I know you don't. I know you dislike it, but it is again definitely pinball. Uh, it's got pinball elements to it, and it's it's good for the price. Um, it'll keep you busy. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't bother. Well, you know what? It didn't even pop up when I typed in pinball. Oh, so really? That's kind of interesting too. Um, these were all just, I, I typed in pinball and I was just kind of selecting, um, what, you know, cause a lot of these I've downloaded at one time or another and then I deleted them and then I forgotten mm. why I deleted them. And so then I downloaded them again and I went, Oh, that's why. Um, but yeah, I still you, reckon out of all the ones that I reviewed on Android by far, the jiggle the, pinball, the, the jiggle <laughs> pinball. That's right. Jiggler. It's the, <laughs> oh my God. It's terrible. Boob for pop bumpers. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just... so if you, if you guys, uh, find any other pinball of this nature that you want us to take a look at, please let us know. Uh, you know, drop us a note there down at the, uh, the Twitter handles. And, uh, so right now I've got the old, uh, shut your trap going on right there. 
and or you can mm. do it at blockade Ooh, look at that magic that just happened nice yeah. um so yeah drop us a, drop us a line let us know if there's another app that we should be checking out and uh throwing up here to have a good laugh at and good point you're right jay william there is still pinball wicked and pro pinball but they're not five bucks <laughs> no and and actually i i have pro pinball uh as a mobile app just the the one table um, yeah the ultra yeah the only one they ever produced because they realized gee well you know using the old style you know, rendering all the frames on the pinball machine that's really expensive compared to you know just making it in unity <laughs> yeah so yeah very expensive way of producing a pinball machine these days but back then you know in the 90s that was the only way you could get photorealism in no games. but i'm talking about the mobile app there's a free version mm. of uh, pro pinball that you can download yeah yeah that's what i'm talking about um, but i don't think it's yeah. pinball ultra uh pro pinball well no pro pinball ultra um, is uh is on android yeah this um, is just uh, is this is just regular pro pinball and, uh, no it does say ultra edition and it's time shock yeah that's this yeah, that's all that's you get it. yeah yeah it's one table one whopping table yeah uh, that took that took them three years to actually release yeah yeah uh, um, so those are those are some things that uh, to have fun with and i'll just remind everybody so schedule for twitch this coming week uh monday 3 p.m. No, actually, it's going to be closer to 3.30 p.m. because i got appointments to, to deal with. But it's Mobile Monday, and therefore we'll be doing daily challenges. And um, once I'm done with the daily challenges, maybe we'll also go back into playing some Zacharia Pinball on Steam. Just kind of uh, take it by ear, see what's going on. Wednesday, 3.30, that'll be truly doing um, PC play. And I think I'm going to try and go for a wizard goal on one of the Ooh. tables that's going to be the goal so it's either going to be attack from mars medieval madness whitewater um I'm trying to think what other one i can actually get to the wizard goal on um <laughs> but yeah well, right in, in, you know in in the time that it's there yeah we'll, we'll see what happens and then of course by friday we only need one more follower one more follower to hit that magic 50 and then it means that i have to skills to pay the bills friday we'll have to play uh one of the five dollar matches so so we're looking for yep. one more that's not hard to get to shouldn't that's be. right all right i think it's, it's achievable yeah. it is i think so i think well today i just found that jared hadn't followed so yeah no. <laughs> so i did it still feel, like i was saying in the comments it still feels like cheating but um um you know but i'm, I'm i've done it because yeah. you know i love the show and i love to i love to subscribe to the show that i'm also in even if <laughs> even if you're not awake for it <laughs> It, that's okay. Um, yeah, although like, you technically okay. would be. You could watch while you're on your way to work. <laughs> I technically could, yeah. But, but why I'm would you? Doing, <laughs> I'm usually doing other things, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, beyond that, I feel like we need to put the brakes on the show today. But mm. uh, make sure you go over to our website, which is blockadepinball.com slash episodes, because there's where you can find all the past episodes, as well as whatever notes jared feels like putting in um, and last last month's notes were long i had links to all the games that were in the in the tournament so you could look through them yeah heaps of stuff in there so check it out yeah so it, it, lots of good stuff there um if you ever feel like dropping us an email it's blah blah blockade at gmail.com but uh for sure the better way of getting in contact is via via the old twitter uh even if you don't yep. like it too bad um <laughs> It's what it's, we do. It, it, it's the easiest way for us to see things, and it's how we tend to uh, send things that we see that uh, Zen is doing or wh whoever. Uh, Zachary is not even on Twitter, so I don't get to forward much on, on them. Yeah, they don't really do a lot on Twitter. They do they do have an account, but it's really used. They're Facebook. That's what they're... They, they really Facebook. are, yeah. yeah. They do love it. Yeah. All right, gang. So that being said, we will be back again next week talking about... Hmm, don't know. <laughs> we'll something. With something. Or if we're not back next week, you know it's because there was nothing to talk about because we really are in the doldrums of, of pinball That's right. right now. So we'll, we'll see what we can come up with. But we always appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and uh, downloading and checking out what we're doing because it makes it more fun for us. And also appreciate everybody that hangs out with us live and puts stuff into the comments because, again, it's like taking callers without actually taking callers. Yeah, it's cool. 
yeah, we, we really actually do enjoy seeing you guys in there and um, and uh, chatting with you with our fingers. <laughs> Not, Not with our mouths, all, right? with our fingers yeah. only. All right, and, yeah, and yes, as, as, as put into the comments, Jared, what will we talk about next week? Well, we'll talk about stuff and things. Till next time, folks. Bye-bye. Thank you. See ya.